a cyclist starts pedaling and accelerates for 12 seconds. The velocity V of T of the cyclist at two second intervals in feet per second is given by the table. So they tell us at different times. So after four seconds, velocity is 7.5 feet per second. After eight seconds, velocity is nine feet per second. Consider the graph of velocity versus time. Velocity versus time. Let capital R of six be the sum of the areas of six right-hand rectangles with equal subdivisions. It follows that capital R of six is an approximation for the total distance traveled in feet during the 12 seconds. What is the value of capital R of six? So I encourage you to pause this video and try to think about it on your own, and then I'll work through it. And any time while I'm working through it, if you get inspired, feel free to pause again and try to take it, take it all the way. So let's, let's think about what they're saying. They say, consider the graph of velocity versus time. So we might as well try to plot that. And so we've got some graph paper here. And we can focus on the first quadrant because all of our time values and all of our velocity values are positive. So let's see, this is time. This is velocity as a function of time axis. Time goes between 0 and 12. And they're giving it to us in every two seconds. So this is 0, 2, Four, six, eight, ten, and twelve seconds, and then our velocity goes between zero and ten feet per second. So this is one, two, three, four, five. I'll just mark off some of them. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is in, this is in feet per second. And this over here is in seconds. So let's plot these points. At time zero, velocity is. Zero. Time two, velocity is six feet per second. Time four, it's 7.5. Gets us right there. Time six, it's 8.5. It's eight, 8.5. Time eight, it, eight seconds, it's nine feet per second. At 10 seconds, it's 9.5 feet per second. And at 12 seconds, it's 10 feet. It's 10 feet per second. And so what I've done here is I've just plotted the data that they've given us. This is the, I'm considering the graph of velocity versus time, at least the data they've given us. And so we could imagine, we could imagine fitting a curve that looks something like this. If we were to that you know these points are just sampled from a curve that might look something like something like this over there. So we are now considering the graph of velocity versus time. Now let's think about the sum of the areas of six right-handed rectangles with equal subdivisions. So when they're talking about equal subdivisions, they're talking about equal subdivisions along the, the, the independent axis, or the time axis in this case. And we're talking about the first 12 seconds. And so if we were to divide the first 12 seconds into six equal sections, they would each be two seconds wide. So this would be one of them. Let me do this in a new color. So they would each be two seconds. That's not a new color. Oh, it is blue. So they're each going to be two seconds. Let me do one that contrasts with green better. So they're each going to be, each of our rectangles are going to be two seconds wide. And I'm just kind of starting them off at the bottom because we have to think about how tall to make them. And then they say to do right-handed rectangles. So what's a right-handed rectangle? So that means we define the height of the rectangle by the value of the function on the right-hand side. So for example, this first rectangle, to make it a right-handed rectangle, we look at, OK, the right side, we're at two seconds. Velocity at two seconds is six feet per second. And so that's going to be the height, that's going to be the height of our rectangle. And so this next one is going to look like this. Now you might say, well, what's a left-handed rectangle then? Well, a left-handed rectangle would be doing something like, would be doing something like, OK, for this first rectangle on the left-hand side of it, my function is zero. So it's just zero. Then the next rectangle, the left-hand side, my function at, or at, at two seconds, the function is six seconds. So the left-hand, the left-hand, the left-hand rectangles would look like this. Would, would look something like that. But anyway, they're telling us to do right-handed rectangles. So let's do right-handed rectangles. So let me clear this a little bit. All right. So this is a. That's our first right-handed rectangle. This is our second one. Let me just draw the tops. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That was the tops of them. And it's just going to look something like this. It's going to look like this. So that's my third one. That's my fourth one. That's my fifth one. 
And then this is my, that's my sixth one. And they're telling us that R, catlet, capital R of six, be the sum of the areas of these things. And they tell us, they tell us that it follows that capital R of six is an approximation for the total distance traveled in feet during the 12 seconds. Now, why is that? Why is the sum of these areas an approximation for the total distance traveled? Well, well before calculus, you learned, you learned that if you have a constant rate, that distance is equal to rate times time. Now, once again, this is assuming that assumes a constant rate. Now, our rate in this example is clearly changing. We are clearly accelerating right over here. But maybe we can approximate the distance traveled if we assume a constant rate over an interval, say over two second intervals, and then we just, we try to roughly, when we assume some velocity over that interval. Now when we take these right-handed rectangles, let's just focus on this first rectangle. If I'm taking the area of this first rectangle, what am I doing? I'm multiplying its height times its width. Its height is going to be the velocity at the end of the two seconds, and its width is the two seconds. So if I were to multiply six feet per second times two seconds, that'll get me 12 feet. Let me make that very clear. So the area for that one, area is equal to six feet per second, my velocity. It's actually the speed, but we'll just assume we're not going to get particular about whether we're getting the direction as well. Six feet per second times times two seconds. Well, that's going to get me twelve. That's going to get me twelve feet. Now that we can say is an approximation because we're saying, okay, you travel for two seconds at some speed at some velocity, but is that going to be an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, it's going to be an overestimate because you're taking the fastest velocity of the interval. The interval started with the cyclist going zero feet per second. So it's clearly overestimating it. And if you think about it, and I encourage you to pause the video and think about it on your own, if we did a left-handed rectangle, it would be underestimating it because we would be taking the slowest velocity over the interval and multiplying it by the interval. But this is an approximation. But let's just calculate what r of six is. So r of six is going to be the area of this rectangle, which is, which is, as we just said, it's six feet per second times two seconds. So it's going to be 12 feet. And then we have this rectangle, which is, which is going to be, let's see, this is 7.5 feet per second times two seconds, which is going to be 15 feet, 15 feet. And you can even see it in the area right over here. It's going to be three feet more, one, two, and then half of two of these, so it's going to be three feet more. And then the area of this one, which is going to be 8.5, so our velocity at the end of the interval is 8.5 feet per second times two seconds, which is 17, which is 17 feet. And then plus, plus this area, which is our velocity at the end of the interval, which is, what is that? That's nine feet per second times two seconds. So plus 18. And then we get the velocity of this, this area, which is going to be this height, the velocity at the end of the interval, which is 9.5 feet per second times two seconds. So plus 19. And then finally this area, which is the velocity at the end of the interval, which is 10 feet per second times two seconds. So plus, 20. And so what does this give us? And this is the, the point at which I'm most likely to make an error. So 12 plus 15 is 12 plus 15 is 27. And then 27 plus 10 is 37 plus another 7 is 44. So that gives us 44. 44 plus 18 is going to give me, let's see, I can get to 52 and then 62. So this is going to be 62 plus 19 is, let's see, that's 81, plus 20 is 101. That's going to be in feet. So capital R of 6, 101 feet, which is going to, it is an approximation for the total distance traveled during the, the 12 seconds, but it's really a, a, an over approximation because we, for every interval, we're taking the the fastest velocity in the interval. If we took the slowest velocity in the interval, it would be an underestimate. If we did left-handed rectangles, and we might have gotten something in between if we some maybe took the average of these two. If so, if we made the height of the rectangle, you know, three for this first one, or something like that. But we'll we'll do that in future in future videos.